Today's video is one that I have been looking forward to creating for some time now and based on when I received the hardware. Enterprise firewalls are something that have always been fascinating to me and I love to nerd out on the latest and greatest firewalls and firewall technology out there. I am a huge fan of open source firewalls. However, I am also a really big fan of enterprise grade commercial firewalls. There is one firewall vendor in particular that I personally feel provides the best security out there and that is Palo Alto. I have been running a PA220 in my home lab environment for the past three years or so and it's been fantastic from a security perspective. However, when I heard that the 220 was basically end of life starting in 2023 and a new line of Palo Alto firewalls was available, I jumped at the opportunity to upgrade my hardware. Stick around, I'm going to give you guys an overview of the new Palo Alto PA440. Well, let's dive into the overview of the PA440, the specs, the capabilities, and most importantly, the security features of this new firewall. to the PA440. I want to show you guys this beast of a firewall. This thing is so hefty. It weighs about five pounds. It is extremely rugged. And I know it's hard to tell from me just holding this in front of the camera. However, a lot of things I love about this firewall, just physically, it is extremely beefy, no plastic housing. There is a little bit of plastic molding around the edge of the frame. However, this is a fully metal case uh, housing, and I want you guys to see this as well. A lot of the edge firewall models from many vendors are adopting this architecture physically. This is a fanless design. This thing is completely silent. Essentially, the whole top of the PA440 firewall is the heatsink. Now, I have had this running in the home lab already, doing some configuration, dumping some configs on it, doing some updates. It, it warmed up just slightly. However, I will say this, I have yet to throw a whole lot of load on it. I've not changed the 220 out with this uh, 440. Now, I want you guys to see this. Uh, the 440 has a wealth of networking on the front. Got eight ports here. The sticker is actually a zero touch provisioning sticker. So they're basically telling you this is the WAN port by default that is configured for zero touch provisioning of the model. Uh, however, I chose not to do that. I just had my config locally and I wanted to manually uh, run through that config. As you can see, wealth of networking, eight ports here. You've got a management and console port. Also around back, I want to show you guys, this thing comes configured out of the box with two power supplies. So you can plug in two power adapters and you've got power that can go to one UPS, power that can go to the second UPS. When you purchase the unit, you only get one power power adapter. So you would have to purchase another power adapter to make use of that. However, it's really awesome to see that it's already ready. It comes pre-configured with that. You can also buy the rack mount for this unit as well. I did not do that since I'm simply going to uh, place this uh, similar to the way I have the PA220 in the rack currently. This thing is awesome. It is extremely rugged, very well built, sturdy unit, lots of networking. Again, the dual power supplies already configured in the unit, much beefier than the, the PA220 as, as we're going to go over in the specs. Let's take a look at the PA400 series hardware architecture just to get a feel for the CPU, the storage, the RAM, and all those other specs of this series of Palo Alto Firewall. I had just showed you guys the 440, which is what I purchased. And as you know, Palo Alto, if you've had experience with them, they do dedicate CPU to management and CPU to the data plane. With the 440, it is a quad core unit and one of those CPUs is dedicated to the management of the unit. The other three of the four cores is dedicated to the data planes. In those data plane CPUs is where the security and threat protection processing is carried out. So it's really cool to see in the 440 you're getting three of those four cores is the threat protection and security processing of the unit. If you step up to the 450 you actually have a six core unit 
four of those cores are dedicated to the data plane and to to the management and as you can see as you step up in the line the 460 an eight core unit and it's linear in what they use for the data plane on the storage side of things uh, storage capacity is according to palo alto documentation the 415 40 45 50 and 60 all share the one 128 gig emmc storage allocated the 410 is a little bit different it's half of that so it's got the 64 gigs of emmc storage but again 128 gigs of emmc storage for the majority of the p400 series line there again we see some of the physical specifications of the unit as you can see here i wasn't lying about the five pounds uh, shipping weight is 7.8 but again this thing is super beefy the 445 just to give you a perspective is even beefier eight eight point six nine pounds really beefy units when you get into the this PA400 series line. Now, arguably one of the most important specifications that you guys are probably wondering about with the PA400 series is the performance. If you see these numbers for the 400 series, you're going to say to yourself, these are wildly beyond what the 200 or 220 series were able to do. In fact, this 440 series is quite a jump in performance from what I'm used to with the PA220. With full threat protection turned on, the 220, I believe, was around 600 meg at best, four to 600 meg at best. However, this 440 unit is almost full one gig speed with threat protection throughput, which is far and above, again, what you get with a 200 series or a two Palo Alto 220 series. As you can see, the firewall throughput is 2.9 slash 2.2 gigabits per second. IPsec VPN throughput for the 440 is awesome at 1.7 gigabits per second. Max sessions, 200 thousand new sessions per second at 37,000 and as you can see as you step up in the line with the six cores of the 450 uh, you're getting more throughput of course there with 1.4 slash 1.6 and the 460 at 2.1 and 2.4 gigs per second. So the 450 and 460 would certainly be models that you would want to look at upgrading to if you had beyond the one gig internet connection, if you were pushing a 2.5 gig connection, that 460 model would be certainly sized more appropriately for that type of throughput. You guys may be wondering, what does the Palo Alto PA440 lab unit cost? Well, first of all, let me define what a lab unit is. The lab units from Palo Alto are actually cheaper than the MSRP that you would go out and purchase for use in production environments. The lab units are special purpose units that you say basically you're using those in a lab environment and also home labs are viable options for that. So I have run the 220 as a lab unit and I've also purchased the 440 lab unit. For a 440 lab unit, I was able to purchase the hardware itself for $795 and the lab software bundle or subscription bundle was $240 and that included basically everything. You get threat protection, DNS filtering, advanced URL protection, global protect, VPN, wildfire subscription, SD-WAN and standard support all in that lab bundle for software and all of those subscription services. So $795 for the hardware itself, $240 for the subscription for the year. So around $1,120 get the complete package. And it's a great firewall. The performance, the commit times are much, much lower than what you would be used to with the 220. I know that's one of the things with the 220 I certainly do not like is installing software updates, commit times for any changes that you make in the configuration. The commit times are literally minutes. Whereas with this 440 unit, so far in my testing, the commit times are are exponentially better uh, with the 440. So it's very much closer to what you would see with the VM series of Palo Alto and those commit times. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video overview of the Palo Alto PA440 lab unit. That is the new firewall I am going to introduce into my home lab environment. I know most feel very strongly about the firewall that they choose to protect their environment. And again, this video is in no way saying that no other firewall is a good choice. Uh, just for me, I really love the Palo Alto solution 
And from my experience, they do have one of the best, if not the best, arguably, security solution and suite of security solutions that I have personally used in both production environments as well as my home lab. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. I've got more great content coming you guys' way. Keep on home labbing, guys. Please stay safe out there, and I will see you guys soon.